Hi and welcome to our briefing on ideal politics, geopolitics and international relations in connection to world issues. With Russia serving as chair this year and over 40 countries applying to join the BRICS, which is now leading the de-dollarization movement worldwide, let's start this briefing by discussing the oil trade between the BRICS Plus and the Arab Gulf states, as well as why the BRICS Plus expansion is speeding up the petrodollar collapse and ultimately preparing fast-growing developing economies to eventually spearhead a massive global dollar dump. Shekman suggests that the United States may be facing a significant issue as BRICS Plus gains more authority over vital shipping routes and natural resources while eschewing the use of the US dollar. There is a serious issue for the United States if the necessity to hold dollars is declining or is eliminated entirely. A nation that travels the world intimidating people and using force is essentially bankrupt. This is encouraging people to look for alternatives worldwide. That's the application of blockchain technology and gold, he stated. The concept of de-dollarization has been developing for many years. It is now speeding up. When does it reach a significant enough level across all metrics? Military, GDP, natural resources, shipping lanes and population. When does anything become significant enough for them to turn on the switch? There won't be much you can do about it when that shift occurs, according to Sheckman. But before we do, if you're enjoying the content, do consider supporting the channel by giving it a like and clicking the subscribe button below. By doing so, you'll be helping YouTube understand your preferences and enable you to receive updates on new videos as soon as they are released. Regards, let's move forward. The fact that the BRICS nations, led by China, are selling their US treasuries and buying gold with their central banks instead is a strong indication that something big is about to happen. They will eventually establish a common settlement currency, as the Russian finance minister has pledged. Shekman anticipated that the immutability of blockchain technology would be demonstrated by tying it to commodities. A currency for common settlement linked to a basket of commodities will eventually emerge. I think it will be gold in particular. Shekman sees the ideal resolution for the BRICS as a union of commodities and blockchain technology. If you follow the correct procedures, have them audited, be transparent and have everyone make the same pledge to the blockchain, you have a real fighting chance, he said. Unless something unforeseen comes up, I don't know if it happens in 2024, but that's what they intend to do. After six of the nine biggest oil producers joined BRICS and stopped using US dollars to make payments, what will happen to the petrodollar? If not right now, this is undoubtedly trouble for the US dollar and ought to cause the White House's policymakers to pause and consider their options. What would happen to the US currency now that Saudi Arabia is a member of BRICS and begins trading some oil and yuan instead of dollars? We have decided to invite the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. There is a real de-dollarization effort underway, with the BRICS grouping at its core, which is aimed at diminishing the influence of the US dollar in international trade. It is a given that three-fourths of the world will band together to challenge US financial and US dollar hegemony, and they will arguably triumph even if not immediately. Argentina and Mexico are hoped to join BRICS among over 40 other countries. The dollar is being driven out of international transactions by the advent of a new global order, much thanks to the US-led and UK-planned conflict in Ukraine. The main reasons why emerging economies are shifting away from the dollar at a faster rate are the US dollar and the benefits it offers the US government, the financial embargo on Russia and sanctions against it. Up until this point, I had been closely monitoring the BRICS expansion and de-dollarization process. Undoubtedly, the BRICS nations will need to confront the dollar in numerous domains where it currently holds a dominant position. This will not be an easy task, but it is feasible provided that they remain resolute in their determination to break free from the US dollar's hold through tangible initiatives like the recently implemented blockchain payment system, which enables payments in local currencies and other currencies. Though the US dollar has long dominated international transactions in many sectors, the emergence of the BRICS and its regulation of the use of local currencies in trade may be a first step toward limiting the usage of US dollars in these operations. At this juncture, 
Let us take a moment to examine the instances in which the dollar has dominated international trade prior to the mounting pressure from leading developing economies to abandon its usage. This is due to the US government's harsh sanctions against these nations that pledge allegiance to the US dollar. To start, US bonds currently have the deepest, most liquid, and most open market available. The yearly volume produced by the secondary market is substantially over $2 quadrillion. Since the dollar dominates these kinds of transactions, that has an effect on it. The daily volume of the repurchase agreement repo market is around $6 trillion in US dollars. For international finance, the repo market is essential. This does not account for the dollar volume that foreign banks issue on a daily basis, a market known as the Eurodollar market, which is not to be confused with actual currency, which exceeds $1 trillion. Furthermore, the US has the most transparent financial and legal system, trade and corporate. Furthermore, the USA makes up 25% of the world GDP. Furthermore, the private wealth of the United States is estimated to be about $165 trillion and is predicted to grow to $300 trillion during the next few years. No continent or nation comes close to it. The level of protectionism in global trade is at its greatest point in decades, and it is terribly unbalanced. Because of the features of their coins, the US dollar and to a lesser extent, the pound sterling, the Canadian and Australian dollars combined account for 70 to 80% of the world's trade deficits, which is precisely what makes these imbalances feasible. However, as the petrodollar is non-existent, non-fungible, and hasn't changed significantly since the 1970s, the petro yuan has no future. While it is possible that oil may ever be traded in yuan, this does not imply that doing so will cause the currency to suddenly become the worldwide reserve that many believe is inevitable. Because it's the money they wish to hang on to, oil exporters have sought to be paid in US dollars. Any other course of action entails exchange risk. Although exporters are able to accept payment in any form of exchange, including building services, tanks and airplanes, their central banks require dollars for reasons unrelated to oil. It is completely incorrect for those to think that the US economy has a special advantage in the global economy because oil is traded in US dollars. Since the American economy is the most innovative, productive and open in the world, it is the hub of the global economy and the US dollar is the most practical, liquid and trustworthy medium of exchange. Remember that the US dollar and the Chinese yuan are linked. Like any other economy, China's oil futures contracts simply guarantees the delivery of oil on a specified date in exchange for yuan, when it permits trading in yuan. The contract only permits a buyer to be guaranteed delivery of oil by paying for it in yuan. It does not furnish the oil or send the yuan to an oil producer. In return for the yuan, the counterparty must provide the oil. Unless the final provider wants to keep yuan, someone will be paying somewhere in the supply chain in US dollars. Furthermore, even with all of the hype in recent years, the yuan still only makes up a small portion of the world's foreign exchange reserves. The yuan does, in fact, lag behind the Australian and Canadian dollars by a considerable margin at 1.1% of the total. In return for their surpluses, Surplus economies have to acquire foreign assets. The most significant contribution here is played by the United States and other Anglophone economies with comparable markets and systems of government, such as the United Kingdom. Only the United States and other comparable economies are stable and developed enough to permit foreigners unlimited access to the purchase of local assets. A nation may only import net foreign savings by exporting asset ownership. Said another way, they are the only significant economies that can and will maintain ongoing trade deficits to satisfy the demands of foreign surplus nations seeking to purchase outside assets. No other significant economy is able or willing to take on this responsibility. Exporters must desire to retain their cumulative surpluses in our RMB, and more importantly, China must give up control over its monetary policy and forego its surpluses in favor of sustained deficits if the world is to see a real shift away from dollars and toward RMB. It is quite improbable that Brazilians will amass RMB assets in return for their surpluses, and even in the event that they do, China will struggle to accept them. By doing this, 
China would be forced to make extremely detrimental political and economic changes. Thus, if the BRICS group speeds its expansion in this year, 2024, Beijing would likely have to start offering the same privileges to foreigners in order for the Chinese yuan to compete with the US currency. It will also significantly lessen its power to regulate the expansion of credit and liabilities in its financial system, as well as give up control over its capital and current accounts. Given that the BRICS nations have agreed to use local currencies as a blockchain payment system for international transactions involving their member states, do you believe the de-dollarization process, which aims to wean nations off of the US dollar, will materialize this year? At this time, let's investigate whether acquiring raw reserves will offer an option. It is also improbable. The arithmetic of reserve building is highly complex because nations like Venezuela, Russia, and iron export commodities primarily. In times of high prices and substantial surpluses, they would need to purchase more aggressively. In times of low prices and weak economies, they would probably need to monetize their reserves. Their method of building up reserves would not only increase the volatility of commodity prices, which would be bad for their economies, but even more concerningly, their reserves would increase in value when they least needed them and decrease in value when they were most needed they require them. The goal of reserves is the exact opposite of what nations desire. Building up reserves of raw resources rather than foreign assets may seem like the better course of action for China, given that it is the world's largest importer of raw materials and may initially seem to be in the opposite situation of countries that export raw materials such as Russia. The correlation between China's economic performance and commodity prices is similar to that of commodity exporters with the direction of causality reversed. China is the world's largest importer of commodities, particularly industrial products, by a wide margin. China's consumption of commodities is anticipated to increase sharply during periods of strong economic growth, and since China plays a disproportionate role in commodity markets, increased Chinese consumption would likely drive up commodity prices. Conversely, commodities prices are expected to decline as China's economy expands slowly. Stated differently, the use of commodities as a reserve strategy would increase economic volatility and leave China, like commodity exporters, with reserves that are most valuable when it doesn't need them and, most likely, least valued when it does. In other words, they will probably be forced to buy assets at high prices and sell them at low ones if they invest in reserves. We will end things there for the time being. As a sign of support for the upload of more videos like this, Kindly remember to like and subscribe to this channel. We appreciate you taking the time to watch. Hoping to see you when this channel uploads its next video.